or earlier here at the Xfinity Center in the first of... It's time to fear the turtle again. The Maryland Terrapins rank number nine in the country. Taking the floor earlier here at the Xfinity Center in the first of two, a Big Ten Big East doubleheader on FS1. As tonight, Maryland plays host to the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. You look at the standings in the Big Ten, understand this, a victory for at least the short term to put Maryland atop the league along with the likes of Michigan State and Illinois. Hi again, everyone. Tim Brando with Maryland Royalty. He's got more boards than anybody, Lynn Elmore and Lynn. Tonight, I think we're going to see the most talented team in the Big Ten, the Terrapins, and the most surprising team, the Scarlet Knights. Well, absolutely, and you alluded to the opportunity that's knocking for both of them. Both of them sit with seven wins. Obviously, Maryland on a four-game win streak. Rutgers has won 10 out of the last 13. They win that eighth game, and depending on what happens maybe tonight, they could get a share of first place in the Big Ten, but... That journey begins with the first step, and that's tonight. Let's take a look at the starting lineups for these two teams. Both have the really outstanding balance. For Rutgers, Caleb McConnell, Montez Mathis. Yaboa is out, an outstanding talent, a swing player to go along with our leading scorer, Ron Harper, and in the middle, Miles Johnson. Anthony Cowan is the straw that stirs the drink for the Terrapins. Ayala, along with Marcel, a defensive specialist, Dante Scott, and Jalen Stick-Smith. And as uh, we touched on before, you believe there's a player coming off the bench. Wiggins that means a lot to this club as well tonight. Absolutely. Multi-talented. Over the last five, he's averaged almost 12 points a game. He's got to be that reliable third scorer for Mark Turgeon. Steve Peichel told us also that Miles Johnson, who is foul prone, must stay on the floor tonight, too. Yeah, yeah they're grounded in defense, and, and Johnson's a pretty good rim protector, plus a high percentage scorer inside. Our veteran officiating crew from the Big Ten, Larry Scarato. Rob Keeman along with Courtney Green. The place is hot, it's so hot we've got perspiration on the floor. They're gonna mop it up before we can get this baby underway. Well, you know it's not ice because they don't <laughs> play hockey here. <laughs> the facilities have changed a little since your days at Cole Fieldhouse. I love what they've done with Cole, though. They've uh, turned it into sort of a museum for football, <laughs> which is wonderful. I was back here during the football season as well. It's a great indoor facility. That's great. I played in a museum. Okay, that's not... <laughs> Good crowd on hand. The rowdies are out. The student body pumped up. This team is highly relevant. Many would tell you that if there's a team out of the Big Ten that's built for success in March, it's Maryland. The opening tap is controlled to Rutgers. And Rutgers with a little bit of weave out top to get some ball movement. You know the high screens are coming. You saw one with Johnson right there immediately for McConnell. Sticks got into the passing lane, knocked it away. Dante Scott hands it off to Cowan. There are times when Maryland struggles to protect the basketball. That's when they get into trouble. Maryland going to their weave up top. Look for a lot of backdoor action, high screens. But it still comes down to Cowan. Rutgers trying to keep him out of the paint. Smith from up top. I'll tell you, boy, you get a guy like that with that size, and obviously we know how effective he is inside, but Jalen Smith is just playing like a man possessed. Terrific range from beyond the arc. Pull up by McConnell, and it's taken down by Morsell. Ayala. He's been stone cold of late. Needs to shake out the cobwebs in his offensive game. If he can start making some shots, Maryland becomes a much tougher cover. And that's why Aaron Wiggins is so important to them. Because Ayala at one point was that reliable third scorer. Yes, he was. Caleb McConnell, the youngster from Jacksonville, Florida, with a fadeaway. Just off the baseline to make it a 3-2 game. And that's the mismatch that Rutgers is going to look to try to take advantage of. They've got good length against Maryland. The big problem they have is whether they can match up with the quickness of Anthony Cowan. These are two of the better defensive teams, not just in the Big Ten, but in the country. And right away you see a reach in. The foul committed by Montez Mathis. 
One of the reasons they play such great defense is that man, Steve Pico, now in his fourth season. I mean, he took over a program and built it from the ground up, and he did it in the master way of his mentor. That would be Jim Calhoun, uh, an alum of UConn, became an assistant. In fact, uh, his old friend and a friend of ours, Dave Lato, was the guy that recruited him, and like Dave, learned a great deal of his basketball from Jim Calhoun, the three-time national champion. Yeah, Rutgers top 20 in the nation in points allowed. Opponent field goal percentage, rebound margin. Smith is two for two from downtown. Has all of Maryland's points. Just over two minutes gone by. Well, at some point, Miles Johnson is going to have to come out and contest him. Or that's going to force Rutgers to go zone. And that's not their primary defense. Uh, he's really come of age. And one of the reasons so many basketball pundits are high on them. He saw 13 games now with 10 or more points in succession to Sticks. Mathis throws up a brick. Quick outlet from Dante Scott to Cowan. Ayala off the dribble, handoff. Rejected great defense in there. Kwasi Yaboa got his hand in there to reject him. Here's where Rutgers has to you know, find a way to get an advantage, maybe take advantage of some mismatch opportunities. Right now, aside from McConnell's shot, pretty much seems to be throwing the ball up without any real purpose. Marcel pressed that time. And a quick outlet from Yaboa. He looks for Maryland to try to force the issue in transition. I mean, that way they don't have to set up against a, a pretty good-looking defense by Rutgers. Getting Harper free and getting him started early could be a catalyst for this team that struggled mightily from an offensive standpoint at the Garden against Michigan the other day. And there is Yaboa just inside the arc, a long two to make it six to four. And that's got to make Steve Pichel feel pretty good. Last game they played, they lost by six points, but they couldn't shoot the ball in the ocean. Second half against Michigan, one of 16 from beyond the arc. Smith with his first miss. McConnell with a quick outlet. Mathis driving in, collects the foul, and will have opportunity at the free throw line when we come back. Mark Turgeon's team out to the two point lead early on at College Park. There's the story during this four game win streak for Maryland. Jalen Smith has just been a walking double double then. Absolutely, and it's this dimension that has really increased his scoring opportunities and made him a tremendous threat. The ability to knock down shots beyond the arc. And you see the defender is late on both of these. And really, the defender manning the paint gets to Smith too late. And Smith's range is going to loosen up that Rutgers defense and create driving lanes for guys like Anthony Cowan. It's almost as if when Bruno Fernando left, when he vacated the middle, it allowed him to have the freedom to not only score inside, but also outside. And his versatility and ability to play either four or five really helps Morcel in the And right on cue, Sticks runs the floor and flushes it home. And that was pure effort right there. Jalen Smith started behind the defenders, particularly Johnson, and just outworked him, outran him, and outworked him. Geo Baker on the floor, and he is their microwave. He is the shot maker. Hit the big three to knock off a pesky Nebraska team in uh, Rutgers' last victory. And that jump hook was not good for Johnson, but a follow. Nice work to stay with it, padding his stats. Go and get your own rebound and put it down. Well, Miles Johnson, fourth in the Big Ten, almost four offensive boards per game. That's why he's such a high percentage shooter. Very active around the rim. Aaron Wiggins also on the floor out of the timeout, number two in white. And you saw Johnson helping out down low and then obviously giving Smith an opportunity to catch and shoot. That time, not so fortunate for Smith, but that's the plan right there.
Harper has not gotten the ball in the shooting position as yet. Here he is, working on Dante Scott. Drives inside, runs into the roadblock that Sticks provides. Jalen Smith getting it done on both ends of the floor. Yeah, that time as secondary defender, he's allowed to be in a restricted area if he goes straight up and walls up with his arm straight in the air. Cowan from downtown. Well, the lead is five. Three threes have been hit by Maryland. Two for Smith, one for Cowan. He lit it up against Iowa. They played so well in that game against the Hawkeyes. Mark Turgeon told his team to take a couple of days off. He felt like through the Christmas holiday and during the Big Ten, he needed to give them a break with hopes that they'd have fresh legs for the stretch run in February. Cowan left free. I think he's surprised. There was a miscommunication, too, with, with Jalen Smith. Out there for Mathis. That, that's uh, the danger for Rutgers. The lid was on the basket in Madison Square Garden the other day against Michigan. And they still found a way to claw back within two before the game was over after going down quickly. But they've got to find a way here on the road against Maryland. Morsell. Everybody getting in on the act. Timeout, Steve Peichel. The Terrapins, nothing but nylon from three-point range. Four out of seven from downtown. One out of five from inside the arc. And take a look right there. We talked about Jalen Smith outworking his opponent. He makes the steal, and then he busts it down court, beating everybody else to the ball. That's effort, folks. And then Morcel with a strong drive. That's the same thing. Jalen Smith with that follow. Morcell, again, the points that you get from him, a terrific defender, pretty much a glue guy. You get the points from him, and that's uh, that's a, certainly a bonus for the Terrapin. Now 36% on the season from downtown. Known more as a, a defensive whiz, he always draws Morcell, the opponent's best offensive player in the scouting report, and that's that would be Harper now as you look at Turge now in his ninth season. Just had his birthday yesterday, and on his coach's show, the legendary voice of the Maryland Terrapins, Johnny Holliday, surprised him by having, uh, among others, Larry Brown, Roy Williams, and his mom <laughs> on his show. And uh, he's just a wonderful guy. We've known Turd since his playing days. And just, of course, he's really happy as Kansas City Chiefs won the Super Bowl, too. It's been a good week for him. Well, Steve Peichel is... That's going to be a push offensive foul. Michael's inserted Shaq Carter in the game, taking Miles Johnson out, and I think that play where Johnson got outworked sent kind of a message. But Steve Michael told us before the game that this is tough. They played Saturday, you know, had some bad luck offensively. They worked their tails off, 26 offensive rebounds, just couldn't put the ball back in the basket. And you got a day off, you only have one day to prepare for a team like Maryland. Well, think about it. Think about it. Baker and Harper, their two best scorers, were collected two out of 19. They still almost won the game. Inside Mariel, just into the game. That's the young man that's gone through two stress fractures in both knees out of Sudan. Now with this program, getting a lot of playing time, and we anticipate even more tonight gets past him there and that's the issue for him getting the footwork back he hasn't played really organized basketball for almost two years but what a talent he is yeah but Carter in the matchup and that's another reason Steve Peichel placed him in there to play against in that matchup did a nice job of taking him straight to the basket Sorrell Smith in the game that one's off the heel and it's pulled down by Caleb McConnell and the bump Foul picked up by Aaron Wiggins. How many times do you say if you if you run, big fella, you'll be rewarded, right? Oh, there's no question about it. <laughs> and as we said, he outworked everybody on that one. Maryland out to a quality start, leading it by six, and let's go in the huddle of Mark Turgeon. Just play defense, get lower. Go up, catch it so deep. Okay. Your legs underneath you. Okay. Don't, no angles. No angles. Got it? 
obviously positioning inside for his big man defensively was what was at issue there. Yeah, absolutely. He's got to be able to move his feet uh, with Carter, who was going to try to feel him and go strong to the basket. Here, a little bit of pressure in the half court, trying to get Rutgers to scramble, which they are and have. Yaboa nearly turned it over. Shot clock down to 10. And here's McConnell in a post up against Cowan. A quick double. Good help. And he gives it up. And the three ball. Good help. Yaboa knocks it down. And the help came quickly, didn't it? That's absolutely. Mariel came, did his job. But an excellent pass by McConnell. Yaboa now with five for Rutgers. And they trail by three. See, he's been a, on a hot streak of late. That one grazes the front iron. Taken by Joey Downs just into the game, number 10. Rutgers also going to Paul McCahey just into the game. Young man that Michael really loves. Jersey kid, plays strong. Nice job there. Ooh. Oh, yes it was. Count the basket. They're going to call that one pinned against the backboard by Mariel and Chef Carter will be credited with the hoop. This is now a 7-0 run. That's a heck of a pass. Yeah, Mulcahy draws Mariel, and Mariel a step too late. But here, an excellent pass there. McConnell sees the double, doesn't panic, and his shooters make themselves available. He finds one. Hello, back on the floor now for Maryland. Joined by Aaron Wiggins, Morcell, Jalen Smith, and Ricky Lindo. Youngster that was part of that 2018 class came in as a 17 year old. He was very young and raw Decided to forego a year of prep school and coming in and there's a quick reach on that double team sort of a as Our friend Bill Raftery would call it a nickel dimer against Jack Carter away from the basket And, and take a look how Rutgers is playing Dalen Smith right now recognizing his ability to knock shots down tightening up on him you know, not playing off of him to try to clog the middle. You notice after that 7 nothing run, Turgeon got Jalen Smith back on the floor as Rutgers pitched a shutout for a couple of minutes. Wiggins. Now that's the guy we touched on at the outset. You felt he would be a real X factor tonight. Yeah, I mean, he's a, a matchup nightmare for a lot of teams, although Rutgers has enough size and length to be able to stay with him and cover him. Yaboa, well, his game has come together, no question. This is the youngster that came over from Stony Brook, recruited out of England by Steve Peichel to Stony Brook. He, he later redshirted there, actually never played for Steve because he left for Rutgers, and now as a grad transfer, has joined to help out in what has been a surprising season. And Lindo, with an acrobatic move, makes it 18-16 Terrapins. We're talking about Ricky Lindo scoreless in the last game against Iowa. Only took nine shots in the last 15 games. So that's an eye opener right there. Yaboa again. Boy, he is feeling it. They better start checking Laquasi because he, he knows what to do with it when he gets it. He has really warmed up. He's made their last five in a row. Four consecutive games coming in here, scoring in double figures. He's an added boost. Stretch the defenses. Uh, there was a lot of contact. I think they're going to get Mulcahy with the push. And Peichel is in disbelief over that whistle. And it's kind of interesting. I'd like to see yeah. a replay how a guy can foul a man from behind yeah. on his back. Let's see. All right, this is the Yuboa jump shot. A little off penetration. And Rutgers offense working a little more smoothly. Mulcahy seemed to have the position there. Exactly. He really did. He hits the uh, concern from Heichel. Rutgers leads it by one, 19 to 18. Their first lead of the night. Dribble handoff to Wiggins, working the pick and roll to Stick Smith. But it's a turnover. Smith having a hard time keeping his feet in the last two. Well, okay, he throws up an air ball. Wiggins again. Too strong. And Montez Mathis comes down with it. Harper has not taken a shot as yet. Still a facilitator. Now he gets one up. And it's not there. 
game kind of disjointed right now. Mark Turgeon wants his guys to slow it down, run something patterned, be a little more aggressive in attacking, in attacking the basket. Marcel runs the baseline, can't get it to go. Yaboa up to Mathis. And the little floater in the lane over Ayala goes. And Rutgers has clawed their way to a three-point lead with seven and change remaining. And if you think this game is ugly, not if you're a Scarlet <laughs> Knight fan, this is the way they want to play. Absolutely. If they can muck it up enough, then they've got a chance to win on the road. This is now a 15-4 run they're on. And when you play solid defense, and now you take a look at Smith settling. You know, now that Rutgers has the lead, he can't necessarily settle. So often those early three balls from Biggs can be fool's gold, right? Maryland is two for their last ten from the floor. Mulcahy, what a bounce pass! Everything but the finish. And that's a high percentage shooter. Boy, Miles no. Johnson. Miles Johnson should have dunked that one. Here's a steal. And it's Yaboa again. Good decision. Didn't have numbers. Going to back it out and get it started. Put the test on Maryland's defense. You know, Wisconsin took care of Maryland. That's a game that probably got away from them earlier this year, Lynn. In a lot of ways, Rutgers mirrors Wisconsin in their toughness from a defensive standpoint. Mathis drains it, and Turgeon gets a timeout. 6-13 remaining. Maryland has now absorbed a 17-4 run. Steve Peichel is really one of the great stories in college basketball coaching right now. His team is up five against number nine, Maryland. And uh, now in his fourth season, 16 wins this year. That's their most since 05-06. This is a program that hasn't been in the NCAAs since Bob Wenzel took them there in 1991. He's assembled a staff with a former head coach in Carl Hobbs, Brandon Knight, one of the outstanding guards of recent memory. And uh, these are guys that I think he trusts, and uh, it's an intellectual property that he's very, very happy about. That's Hobbs on the right, Brandon on the left. I remember Brandon Knight, uh, terrific days at Pittsburgh. Big time. And I got to tell you, he was driving up to a game, Peichel, and there was a guy scalping some tickets. And because he's such an understated guy, Steve said, oh, you, you got some there. The guy didn't know who he was. And so he says, I just wanted to make sure that uh, you were really scalping tickets. Well, they were scalping tickets at, uh, at the rack all season long because they've had <laughs> nothing but sellouts at home. Wow. So he's really reignited this program and given it the kind of uh, punch that was sorely needed. They were starving for a winner, and they've got one now in New Jersey. And speaking of punch right now, Anthony Cowan, the guy who really concerns Steve Peichel and his defense, he has got to start getting more involved in the offense right now. Yeah. He's been relegated to passing the ball and standing still. He's got the quickness to create some stuff. To give a chance, uh, read a column done by Dana O'Neill in The Athletic about what Peichel has done in that story I was telling you about because it's truly remarkable. Here's Harper in a post-up over Dante Scott. And that's his first bucket of the night. And did you see him wave everybody off and say, I got this? <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, he's the son of a five-time All-NBA performer and champion. And yes, he was affected greatly by the tragic loss of Kobe Bryant, having known him and his father having been a teammate of Kobe's. See, right now, Rutgers is taking the ball out of the effective shooter's hands and forcing guys who aren't accustomed to putting the ball in the basket or even taking the shots, forcing them to do damage. Great defensive work by Jalen Smith that time against Miles Johnson. Let's see if they can work it now to get it to Smith. If Cowan, if they don't have numbers. And this problem continues. Maryland with just four points in the last seven and a half minutes. And there's a bump. But prior to that, he was carrying the ball. So a turnover. How about Harper waving people away and just saying, let me take over here. That's what, that's what you say, man. I got this. 
<laughs> and if you're a defender, you remember that the next time. <laughs> Give me my space. I'll tell you what, on the other end, though, Jalen Smith has got to be concerned now. He's down on the block. He knows he's going to get doubled as Rutgers has now gotten Maryland on their heels, and they're going to be able to play their type of defense. He's got to be able to take some patience, recognize the defense, and then react to it instead of just trying to put his head down and go to the basket. Rutgers very active hands peeling back to help. Terrell Smith back on the deck along with Cowan and Ayala. Cowan splitting the double team and is fouled but wave it off. Larry Scarano says foul was on the deck prior to the shot. But that's what Maryland needs. They need Anthony Cowan to loosen up this Rutgers defense, which has been tremendous, you know, over the last several minutes. Right there, all he needs is a step. Rutgers has got the length to kind of thwart him, but they may not have the quickness on a consistent basis. Terrapins are scoreless in the last five minutes and ten seconds. And in that time, 0 for 5 from the floor and three turnovers. And you again, see. give Rutgers a lot of credit defensively, taking the ball away from the dangerous Maryland players and forcing other guys like Scott and others to take the shot. Does that not remind you of those old UConn teams of uh, Jim Calhoun? That, De defense and rebounding? Yeah, that and rebounding, you're right. Shot clock winding down, and now on the deck, we got a tie ball. The arrow will be to Maryland. They'll have it when we return. 357 remaining opening half. First of two on FS1 tonight. All right, Rob, thank you. Here, 25 to 18, and a little bit under the radar, Lynn Elmore. A piece of legislation that the Big Ten has proposed. I love the fact that they're being progressive here. The soonest the proposal could be adopted, 2021, but it's about players in all sports being able to transfer once without sitting out a year. Your thoughts on it? I know you're a proponent. Oh, there's absolutely no question, and I've been a proponent of that for years. I mean, coaches can leave from year to year. Um, whenever they can with a buyout or something like that. I think players can make a mistake yeah. in their choice of, of schools, and they shouldn't be penalized for it. And I think this is uh, forward thinking without question. Well, by the way, I think a lot of fans don't know that you could do that in every sport except those five. That's been, I think, one of the more under-publicized aspects of the proposal. And if that gets traction, obviously other conferences will probably follow suit. There will be obviously some coaches against it as they oftentimes are, but it uh, will be interesting to see how it develops in time. Here's Cowan trying to get Ayala free, and his struggles continue, and Maryland has gone stone cold from the floor. They were four out of seven to open this game from three-point land. They're 0 of seven in the last 10 minutes and from again, downtown. You give the credit to the Rutgers defense. Yep. Jalen Smith entered the game at 10.35 here in the second half. And he has had no points and no rebounds as Rutgers has taken Smith as well as Cowan out of the game. Miles Johnson with that push off of the offensive rebound commits his first foul. That's good news for Steve Peichel for that big to only have the one personal foul this late in the half. There you see the scoring defense story and where this team from Rutgers ranks along with Maryland. Mark Turgeon's always prided himself on defense and they join up with uh, the likes of Wisconsin and the Boilers and the Buckeyes in that category. Ayala again. But he needs to start making those shots. You can see he's just not confident taking that shot. He doesn't have that bounce in the step that you witnessed last year when he was pretty hot, pretty accurate. And again, Wiggins with, his, with the ball, they're double teaming taking the ball out of his hands as well. And he reached in that time and committed the foul on Harper far, far from the basket. And we talk about the reliable third score when Cowan mm -hmm. and Smith aren't able to touch it, let alone put it in the basket. You need that third guy. And right now, Maryland searches. Aaron Wiggins with that foul, by the way, his second. So he'll have to be careful here in the remaining 215 as Turgeon is elected to keep him on the floor. 
Williams, a nice spin move along the block, but again, Carter unable to get the job done. You can almost see the frustration in Maryland as they bring the ball down the floor. There's another rejection by Harper this time. Wiggins staying with it on the offensive glass. Another recycle. Cowan, who had gone down to the other end of the floor, comes in to press it, and he'll get to the free throw line. And that's fearlessness right there, Anthony Cowan. You know, when you're in a need situation, you got to throw caution to the wind, and Cowan put his body on the line, driving into an awful lot of trouble. And, man, he's lucky he's... Avoid an injury. <laughs> Aguasi Yaboa picked it up. That was a hard foul. That hurt over here. He had already gone to the other end, thinking after the block they needed someone back to balance the floor. And when he noticed Maryland had come away with it, he he, he made up his mind. He was going to get the ball and attack the 10. Okay, he comes into the game for Harper. And Dante Scott back on the deck, replacing Marcel for Maryland. Well, that free throw ended a drought, a scoreless drought of 7.38 off the clock. The two free throws for Cowan. Yeah, that, that's what we're talking about. Anthony Cowan's ability to get to the paint and create for himself and others, and Maryland sorely needs that. Cowan with 31 points the other day against Iowa. He was at his absolute best in that particular game. Those were the first free throws of the game for either team. And here is a turnover by Mathis. And Miles Johnson comes back on the deck for Rutgers replacing Shaq Carter. 25-20. Good news for Maryland is they went almost eight minutes without scoring and yet are only down by five. Smith hit his first two from there to open the game. Used the ball fake that time, couldn't get it to go. And you're right, Tim. Fool's goal. Yep. There's a defensive play by Wiggins. And that hot potato is finally out of bounds. Last touch by Rutgers. Turgeon trying to get the defense to ignite his offense, which has been porous of late. Some good hands right there. And then in the scramble for the ball, Maryland, the one thing, they may be lacking some accurate shooting, maybe a little bad judgment on the offensive end, still playing solid defense, but there's absolutely no lack of effort. And that's the thing Turgeon likes about his club. He knows there are times when they have struggled to score, and they're certainly in the midst of that right now. Harper slipped. Fans wanted a turnover, did not get that whistle. Tough fadeaway, grazing the front iron for Caleb McConnell and Ayala. Oh, has that goodness. one blocked by Harper? Talk about rim protection. All the way on the other end. Oh, <laughs> and the iron not just unkind, but almost downright rude to Harper. It'll go the other way. Harper picks up the foul on the offensive end. Well, Eric Ayala not hitting shots, recognizing you got to go hard. But Harper was an obstacle. Terrific job coming from the weak side. You know, I think Turge thought that that one was pinned on the backboard, but upon further review and looking at it, I thought that was a clean block. Looked like a good call. And yeah, Maryland's got a hole for one right here. And consider themselves lucky with drought and some of the turnovers. They could possibly be only down. 0 for the last 11 from the field. Wiggins. I think Harper got his second right there. So the offensive foul on one end, and then that giveaway foul will give him two before the break. And will force Aquasi Yaboa to come back onto the floor and Harper to sit down. Well, Yaboa probably needs to be, particularly in this last shot. He's been the hottest of all the Scarlet Knights. If you're Pykele, though, you hate to see a guy like Harper get two fouls in 24 seconds. He was foul free prior to the offensive foul. Well, you called it. Here's Yaboa. Off the front iron, and we're at the break. At halftime, at the Xfinity Center, 25 to 20 here in College Park. After the break, 
We're going to send you to our FS1 studios in Los Angeles for the halftime report. Rob Stone and the lovely and talented Steve Lavin coming your way, so stick around. We welcome you back. 25-20 Rutgers, the road team, looking for a big upset against the ninth-ranked Maryland Terrapins. Tim Brando alongside Lynn Elmore. You know, these teams have surrendered between them only 10 paint points. The defense has been great. The offense, lackluster. Well, I mean, look, you can have a Rembrandt or you can have a Dolly. <laughs> this one's surreal right yeah. here. <laughs> Last nine minutes, eight total points, three total field goals, none by Maryland, and ten total turnovers. But you attribute it to the defense because both of these teams have really dug in hard, and they've been doing a pretty good job of stopping the other. Well, anytime you look at the numbers, you can always tell. And the numbers coming in definitely dictated that we were going to see a lot of defense, and we have. Yeah, absolutely. And we we'll take a look at what Rutgers has been able to do defensively. You know, they've set the tone, doing a nice job, and so is Maryland, walling up inside. And um, Rutgers with quick hands and pushing the ball up the floor. The shot blocking has been there as well. This is what makes the game ugly, and this plays into Rutgers' hands. For Maryland, in order to get past that, they've got to do what Anthony Cowan did. They've got to put their bodies on the line. They've got to get the ball in the paint and create, which is what Steve Peichel and Rutgers were afraid that he was going to be able to do. There are the numbers, and no, they're not pretty. Yaboa leading the way for Rutgers. And Stick Smith, Jalen Smith, by the way, hit his first two threes. We touched on the fool's gold aspect, and he did not score after the 15-30 mark of the first half. And I think you said it correctly when you said settling. Yeah, I mean, at that juncture and in the first half, maybe you could do that. That's a flop by Cowan and Larry Serrato right on top of it makes the call. And Cowan, Cowan recovers from the flop to make the steal. And on the other end, turns it over. He took it in too deep that time. It was the flop you're talking about. Absolutely, and then right in front of the official, he saw it. When that head jerks back first, <laughs> and the rest of the body comes, I mean, that's a dead giveaway. Eight assists and 11 turnovers combined for both teams in that first half. Just but, uh, miserable offensive numbers, but as, as, to your point, the defense has been outstanding, and that's the calling card of both clubs. Yeah, that turnover by Cowan on the other end, though, I think he had the right idea. And he picks up that foul on the post up by Caleb McConnell. See, this is where I think Cowan's trying to assume leadership, trying to demonstrate activity, trying to make something happen. But you got to be careful that um, you don't do it in such a way that's inauthentic and allow the officials to control what you're doing. Same starters on the floor to open the second half. Remember Harper playing with two. He picked up two quick fouls in 24 seconds in the late stages of the first half. And he is the leading scorer for the Scarlet Knights. Maryland's got to get some good spacing. And another steal. They got to hold on to the ball. Yep. Montez Mathis comes away with it. And that's the defense we were talking about, the active hand. Quasi Yaboa giving it up, and they swing it around the other way to Montez Mathis. There's the dump down. The Miles Johnson. No help coming for Sticks. Doesn't need any. Doesn't need it, right? Cowan leaves it for the trailer, Marcel. Nice pass inside. And a third foul committed by Harper. Sort of a wrong place, wrong time situation. And remember those giveaways in 24 seconds time. That's going to mean he'll have to sit for quite some time. Now, he's looking to the sidelines as if to say, no, I can go. But Michael's got to make the move. Geo Baker will check in for it. Yeah, another hardship game for Ron Harper. Last game against Michigan, only three points, one of ten from the field in only 23 minutes. Saddled with foul trouble in that game as well. Inside, Stick Smith rejected on this end of the floor. Something we've not touched on as yet, Lynn. Jacob Young is also not here for this game. Suspended for... A violation of team rules, and that's eight and a half points and some fouls they could really use on the road here tonight. 
Yeah, a guy who scored double figures in six out of the last nine contests. Any offense at this stage would be needed. And another bump. That foul goes against Caleb McConnell, his first. And against this Rutgers defense, if Maryland stays aggressive and keeps piling up the fouls, you know, they might win the war of attrition. Almost two minutes gone by. No points this half for either team. In keeping with the theme of the first half, here's Ayala. Oh, he is just so off. Yeah. Much better shooter than he's demonstrating. Baker giving it up to Mathis. This one off the heel, the long rebound to Ayala. Quick outlet. Harp, well, beautifully done by Scott. Dante Scott knew what to do with it. Ayala with his head up, found it. And Maryland themselves knew what to do with a transition so they don't have to set up against a pretty strong Rutgers defense. That's their first field goal in in 9 minutes and 21 seconds. From the end of the first half to the start of the second. Nice move. Ooh, with the iron pound to McConnell as well. Nice move, soft touch by McConnell. And again, we talk about the length of, of uh, Rutgers. Dribble handoff. Marshall! More dunk time! That gets them on their feet in College Park. Ooh, Cowan reaching in. How about this maneuver by Morsell? Uh, this is a message right here. Again, aggressive to the basket. We've been calling for it all evening for Maryland. And finally, Morsell just demonstrates exactly what needs to be done. Daryl Morsell, athletic. Last two games, about 10 points per game after really having some difficulty in the prior three games. Only four points, two of 16 from the field during that time. Jalen Smith with another rejection of Miles Johnson. Morsell again. It all started with the block shot. And the Rutgers lead down to one in a timeout. Sunday on Fox, catch the best bowlers in the world as they go head-to-head -head in the PBA Tournament of Champions. The action starts Sunday at 5 Eastern on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And America gets more of Rob Stone, the voice of the PBA, on Fox, as if he didn't have enough jobs. The author of The Hambone will be bringing it to you. <laughs> Oh it is, man. Boy. It's they, they, they love the PBA loves Rob Stone. I'm telling you, they who, do. Who doesn't love Rob? Yeah, well, Stone. good point. Come on. Yeah. Maryland made just a couple of shots after missing 13 straight to close the half. Morsell and Scott, who had three points combined in the first half, have six points already in this half. Three and a half minutes gone. And you see Miles Johnson out of the game, not effective down low. Neither is Carter at this point in time. Yaboa has gone scoreless the last 12 and a half minutes, and he was the one real factor offensively that Rutgers had. He's got 11 points on the night, but nothing yet here in the second half. That ball out of bounds. Shot clock will reset after the kick. Four minutes gone by, and the Rutgers lead has been whittled down to one here in College Park. First place on the line, perhaps, for Maryland. Truly one of the great scenes in intercollegiate athletics, not just basketball. 2001 here in College Park is done as well as any you'll see on any home floor, anywhere at any time. The Space Odyssey. Oh, man. Right here. Sprock Zarathustra. Take me back, my man. <laughs> and you know. They didn't have this when I played. <laughs> <laughs> I do see that jersey up in the. In the rafters here at this brand spanking new building. It's a little bit higher up than it was at Cole. Marcel can't get that one to go, and the long rebound pulled down by Geo Baker. 
2002 was also, by the way, a good year for Maryland. Not just think about 2001, but 2002 wasn't bad either. Yes, sir. <laughs> but now is now, and Maryland looking to try to make a stop. Okay, with a nice, calm, under control jump shot out of good movement by Rutgers. And Mulcahy rattling that one home. That could be a good sign. He's a streaky shooter. He really help him. That one was a blur, and Morcel was there to slam it home. Just this outstanding follow. Everybody's attention was grabbed by Cowan's drive. That's why Steve Peichel said that's their main focus, to keep Cowan out of the paint. Whenever he's in the paint, make or miss, something good happens to Maryland. Yaboa rejected again by Jalen Smith. That's four rejections for Sticks. On the other end, hello, how do you do? Those were Smith's first points in 21 minutes of playing time. Ayala, numbers, sticks! Oh, sticks! With some big bark! Well, it's Maryland's transition game that Rutgers most feared. Everybody capable of getting in the act. It all began with Cowan getting into the paint, creating for someone else. And then defensively, the hustle, the push, and then Smith picking up where he left off in the first couple of minutes of the first half. And Maryland back on track as Smith on the line after I'm, being fouled. I'm going to take you back musically. Just look at his face, okay, not the height. David Ruffin of the Temptations. <laughs> you like that? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. With the glasses. Yeah, there are yeah, not a lot of analysts I could go there with, but I can with you. <laughs> <laughs> 34 to 29. And Jalen Smith is on his own personal run That's here right. in the second half. He's telling folks, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> Baker, not there. Smith with another rebound. Clears to Cowan. Cowan for three. Never got the shoulder square that time. And a good block out by Shaq Carter. And this is the difference with Rutgers this year. Solid defense. They demonstrate some resilience. Maybe they can stop the bleeding. Harper, beautiful dish. Well done to Carter. And remember, Harper back on the floor playing with three. Steve Peichel wasting no time. He'll go eight or nine deep, but he absolutely needed his best offensive personnel on the floor right now. Good decision to get Harper back. And again, we talk about that defense. It'll slow Maryland a bit now. As you said, they can gum it up a little bit, take your rhythm away, because Maryland was on a roll. Okay, he picks up that foul. That's his third. So he joins Harper with three. And remember, Mulcahy knocked down that perimeter jump shot. And they need to keep those guys eligible, uh, if at all possible. Harper, oh, well, that was a risky maneuver playing with three. Almost came away with a steal. Marcel got away with a push-off as well. Wiggins, that goes crying off the front iron. Once again, we talk about resilience. You have solid defense on the road. You've got a chance. Okay, he is playing with some confidence. This kid has a heck of a future. 6'6 six, six freshman. Great basketball IQ. Here he is, right on cue. Off the uh, back iron, pulled down by Morcel. You see that 14-6 scoring run for Maryland? Come out guns a-blazing to start each half. There's a loose ball takeaway by McConnell. And you notice how Rutgers cut Cowan off in the middle once again, sealed him off, and created the turnover. 
Dante Scott gets that foul, his first. It's a hard job to do to keep Anthony Cowan Jr. out of the paint. But when you can do that, that bogs Maryland's offense down, and Rutgers is, has done a pretty good job of it this, after, this evening. Only three team fouls committed by Maryland. They played really hard on the defensive end and not committed many fouls. They went to sleep off that inbounds play, but got a break when McConnell could not get the runner to fall. Rutgers with no free throws tonight, zero. And we played a long time, you might recall, in the first half before Maryland got the only two free throws made in the first 20 minutes. Well, that's kind of similar to the Michigan game. Yeah. They were only three of five. Michigan was 16 of 24. So well, Rutgers has to find a way to get to the line, get some of those free buckets. Geo Baker going reversal. Everything but the finish. A heck of a move. Cowan now does not have the numbers, gives it up to Morsell. So what Baker did, that's why you don't get to the free throw line. You can't avoid the contact. Now, juxtapose that against what Cowan does and puts his body on the line. He's going to get rewarded for it. Both teams under 33% from the floor. But each have been able to manifest offensive runs. Rutgers with an 11-0 spurt in the first half. Harper with that fade away. Can't get it to go. Carter tries to slip in. Uses his position to draw the foul from Jalen Smith. How about this, Lenny? How about it? This is the transition Maryland has been looking for all evening. That's what's gotten them back to this lead. You push and you slam. A huge night of Big East hoops comes your way tomorrow here on FS1. First, number 10 Villanova battles 19th rank Butler at 6.30 Eastern. Then at 8.30, Miles Powell leads number 12 Seton Hall against Georgetown. Both games are also available on the Fox Sports app. And uh, a reminder also, once we're done here, Lisa Byington and Stephen Bardo will be on hand at DePaul for the matchup between Xavier coming off a huge road win for them at Seton Hall this past weekend. They try to uh, keep getting it done on the road, and they were preseason number three ranked in the in the Big East, maybe coming of age here in the latter stages of the season. Well, this is the time to peak. I mean, there's no question about it, and when you look at Maryland, their four games that they've won consecutively, you know, they're starting to feel it. But it's nothing like a team like Rutgers, a scrappy, gritty yeah. defensive team to kind of take you out of yourself. So Steve Peichel has got to be proud of the fact that his guys, even though they're not necessarily knocking the ball down with regularity, they're in this game because of the grit. Well, those were the first two free throws taken by Rutgers and the first one made by Shaq Carter to make it a two-point game. 34-32 with 10 and change remaining. Cowan will stop and start. Sorrell Smith with a leaping leaner using the window. Well, this kid from St. Petersburg, Ballyhooed, not as Ballyhooed as some of the others in that 2018 class. They're hoping that his coming out party will happen in the second half of the season here in College Park. Geo Baker has not been looking for his shot as often as we're accustomed to seeing. He's got to do a better job of looking inside. Although right there, McConnell with another outside shot utilizing his length to shoot over the defender. He went eight for eight in a game back on January 3rd against Nebraska. Well, he's got the ability to get hot as well, McConnell. And there's a foul far, far from the basket given away by Geo Baker. And that's number three on him. And Peichel is in disbelief. And that's just one you don't want to give away. Yeah, on the reach, lost his balance. He knew it right away. So there are three Scarlet Knights playing with three fouls. Harper, one of them, Mulcahy, the other. And you can add Geo Baker to that group. They're all on the deck right now. More importantly, that's the 15 foul 
for Rutgers. You don't want to get Maryland into the bonus so soon. They're a pretty good free throw shooting team. Plus, Rutgers doesn't get to the line, so it'll be difficult for them to match. Maryland really beating them up in the painted area, too. Smith can't get that one to go. Marcel has been very active. Here he is again. 14 to 2 after that bucket off the offensive rebound by Morcell in the painted area. That's this half. And that was a miscommunication by Rutgers. Two black shirts on the glass, and they looked at each other as the ball sailed over their heads. Carter and Harper looking to play a little high-low game, but Smith is really denying them. The shot blocker is in their heads, as he should be. He already has four tonight. Harper, too strong. And not the kind of shot that you necessarily needed. You got a mismatch with McConnell and Cowan, and they didn't even look at him. Wiggins for three. When Maryland gets that kind of spacing, and you see all the pieces that they have, Lynn, that's one of the reasons they are so highly thought of. Mulcahy, nice individual move, showing his versatility. And those are the kinds of moves that will get you to the free throw line rather than settling for the simple jump shot after one pass. That was a bucket that was sorely needed for Rutgers. 41-36. Look at a hard hedge right there. Got to get back. And the ball kicked by Carter. And here comes some substitutions for the Scarlet Knights. How about this move by Morsell? Like I said, the two black shirts there. Harper and McConnell just looked at each other as the ball came off. And Morcell, Johnny on the spot. And then right there, a little bit of penetration. It's all it took to draw the defenders into the paint and find the open shooter on the perimeter. You know, when Maryland's at its best, they're moving the ball, they're penetrating, they're being very aggressive to the hoop. Akwasi Yaboa and Miles Johnson both pack on the floor for Rutgers. Two of the three players playing with three fouls. Harper. One of them out of the game, and here is another three ball. This one from Anthony Cowan. And every once in a while, a guy has a feeling. And the lead balloons to eight. Mulcahy. Smith the rebound. And Tim, in a game like this, eight point lead, you might want to double that yeah. the way this game is being played. Yeah, go for the jugular if you can. Wiggins again. This time off the front rim. Rebound to Miles Johnson. Johnson with the pick for McConnell. And the teardrop. Halfway down the cylinder and out. Stays with it, though. Goes with the jump stop. Does not get the roll. A third opportunity coming on the tap out from Johnson. And we told you Rutgers relentless last Saturday against Michigan, 26 yeah. offensive rebound. Unfortunately, they couldn't put any of them back. Very few. There's another runner. Got it on the rim, on the bottom of the rim. So a fresh clock and a foul underneath. Miles Johnson gets it. They were incredible in that sequence on the offensive glass. Well, you take a look at Anthony Cowan Jr. Like I said, every once in a while you get a feeling. You know, that goes along with running your sets. And that's what you need. Yeah. Oh, is everybody happy? You bet they are. The winners, the winners, and all of those that are competing. And uh, oh, by the way, how important is tonight's game? It's this important. Michigan State about an hour behind us playing. Illinois has a chance to stay in that three-loss column after their big win over the weekend. You look at Maryland and even Rutgers. Should Rutgers win this game, they would inch even closer to the top spot in what is a very cluttered, top-heavy Big Ten race. Absolutely. Eight wins right now is the key. And if Michigan State should lose, somebody's going to get a share of first place and from this game. Miles Johnson at the free throw line. After what we could call a typical Rutgers possession tonight, they, they could not find it. The, the iron was definitely unkind, but they managed to keep it alive on the offensive glass. 
and get to the free throw line. This team just mirrors the image of its head coach. Well, quite honestly, is wow, look at that. An offensive rebound mm. and the putback. A three-point swing right there, and it's 44 to 39. That's a productive trip. And the iron was and <laughs> yes, it was. Hey, Rutgers just hanging around. Maryland has gone on its spurts right now. Now they've been by far the more dynamic team. Wiggins. And the rebound cleared again by Miles Johnson, the kid from Long Beach at 6'11, 255. He's coming along at that position. He really is. Yeah, Maryland 10 of 21 from the field here in the second half. That's what's gotten them the lead. Rutgers only. 6 of 24. Well, Smith just affecting every shot. Harper was waiting for him to come in and get that one. Yeah, I, I think. That, but see, what happens is Rutgers is just rushing the shot up. They're not setting themselves and going up strong. And that's costing them. Oh, that was a beautiful pass. Wave it away. A foul spotted prior to the shot. And Cowan really wanted that dime to count. Take a look at this. That offensive put Lynn. And oh. again, at least one of the stronger moves you've seen from a Rutgers player. You want to see those numbers you were talking about against Michigan. You look at that stat line and you say, how in the world could that team have lost? By and they lost by six. Yeah. Cowan gets it done again. He's up to 11 now. 47-39. This equals... The largest lead of the night for the Terps at eight. And this is danger time for Rutgers as Maryland found its range, found its rhythm. And Rutgers not really able to answer Ooh, much. That's a tough that shot helps. by Montez Mathis. He had 17 on 7 of 15 from the floor. Eight boards to go with it in that loss to Michigan. He really was the only productive player in that game. He's up to eight now. That was a shot they sorely needed. Now the big defense has to dig in. This penetration in the paint and a kick. There's a steal. Harper with numbers. Three on two. Yaboa rejected. Beautifully done, but a follow. A rejection by Wiggins. But magnificent work on the follow to get the bucket to make it 47 to 43. Harper trailing the play. And that time Rutgers out hustled Maryland. You had four black shirts in the paint on that break. Not leaving anything to chance. I think Mathis got that foul. He, he's upset about it. And so is Michael. That's just stick to itiveness there. And look at the guys coming and trailing. Shooter, a couple of trails, three trails. We're getting an explanation. But they're, yeah, they're looking for the hook. The hook and hold. And they're going to take a look at it. Larry Scarato is over there, along with Rod Kingman. Courtney Green came by to let us know. Yeah, preliminarily, it doesn't look like it was a hook and hold. It might have been a hook around the chest of Cowan. In a lot of ways, Lynn, when you sum up both these teams coming in, and we talked about one, the more surprising team, the other, Maybe the more, more talented team. Watch Here's the, the hook and hold. We're going right to take a look baseline. at it right there. Well, actually, the hold would be Cowan grabbing yeah. the defender, but it looked like he just tried to get his arm off of him. Right. Didn't look like he held him. But in so many respects, when you look at these teams, statistically and where they rank right now, Rutgers have been ranked for the last two weeks. They're unranked this week. Maryland has soared into the top ten. <laughs> home and away it's Jekyll and Hyde and I think is a mirror image of what all of the landscape of college basketball is this year oh it's no question about it home sweet home and when you look at a crowd like this you can see how players remain energized and feel good about themselves and the rack at Rutgers oh my goodness they're 15 and 0 there the crowds have been stupendous you know full support of a program that's been down but letting them know how much they appreciate the effort they put forth this year so far. I was at the shoot-around today for Rutgers, 
their people are so excited to be on FS1 tonight. I mean, this is a club that has not gotten a lot of national attention other than they've had sellouts and they've been surprising people. Are they gonna call it looks it? like they're going to call it. Larry Scarato letting it look it, it was Turish temporary. Know. Yep. I think any time it's close now, they yeah. call it. Any time. It, it was such a temporary thing. It's almost it was almost uh, in instinctive. Yeah. Hook and hold. Right. Gotcha. Okay, thanks, guys. Well, so they did call it. I didn't think that it was enough of a hold well, for the period, but you're right. If it's close, anytime guys have it's been close. Hurt. And the other factor, anytime it's up high, that's a point of emphasis. And the other thing to consider, Lynn, all of these officials want to work in March. Okay, <laughs> yeah, if true. they are not going by the letter of the law in February, uh, they don't get those opportunities to work as deeply into the month of March as they'd like. Yeah, the sad part of, about it for Maryland is that Mathis, Montez Mathis should have been called for a foul. Yeah. Instead, he gets to the free throw line. It's a big huge. swing. Yeah. Huge. Gets that free throw to go, just the second made of the night. He gets two Rutgers. shots. They get the ball Plus back. Plus the ball, that's and right. And Anthony Cowan Jr. gets a, a flagrant one, which is obviously another personal. Mark this down. It could be a deciding factor in the momentum of the game and the outcome of the game, potentially. This is now a 9-3 run very quietly for Rutgers. Yeah, Turge took that well. <laughs> you know, he really did. I mean, I, recognizing that it did occur is nothing you can say. Yep. Here's Harper. Remember, playing with three. Forced into a tough fadeaway, and he knocks it down over Marcel. And you called it, man. A tie ball game, right? Just like that. Make that run 11-3. The tie it at 47. First one to I can't drive 55. What do you think? 55 might win it. There's a foul on Mathis. <laughs> the uh, sarcastic response of the faithful here in College Park will let you know. It's, I'm Steve Peichel, though. I got to, as you take a look at Harper's shot, we'll come back after the break and talk about that. Nice job by Harper. All right, Rob, thank you. I think the guy on the far right has, of the Turgenites, I think he looks a little like Rob Stone. Now the, <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Don't mess with Rob. Uh, the choreography needs to be a little more in sync, fellas, but still, that's my Rob Stone lookalike right there. <laughs> He's the one more free-flowing, you notice. It's supposed to look like Mark Turge. Yeah, <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's, that's the idea of the Turgenites, isn't it? Yeah. Well, here we are in the one and one now the rest of the way. Anthony Cowan in a tie game at 47. Speak about key opportunity right now. Jalen Smith, 14 points, 14 rebounds in this game, but no points in the last 11 minutes. Look for Maryland down the stretch to really try to look for him, get him some touch. And talk about enigmatic, Yaboa, okay? It wasn't Yaboa for Rutgers at 11 points in the first 11 minutes. Nonsense for Rutgers. Right now, they're going to make an effort to get to Harper Jr. if they could. But right now, the defense is slowing him down. Smith got back to cover. There's Yaboa. Hello. There, there's your bucket. How about that? Glad I got that nugget in when I did. That's a two. It's 50 to 49. Should be 49 all, and it is. That was a two, not a three. Cowan. Harper on the glass. Boy, he's played well with 3,000 in the second half. And down the stretch, here's where rebounding, holding the opponent to one possession is so, so important. And Rutgers among the nation's leaders in rebound margin. Keep an eye on Morcel checking Harper up near the top of your screen. Yaboa giving it up now to Harper. Up against the clock. An air ball and a shot clock violation. 
And you see Harper telling Yaboa, you got to shoot that. You know, didn't give me enough time. You got to be cognizant of the clock. Well, the intensity level picking up. I think, Steve, I think we may have had a clock situation that Steve Peichel picked yes. up on. They're going to take a look at. More specifically, was that a two or a three on that shot by Yabo in the corner that we credited with a two? That's going to be what the conversation is about. That right foot. I, I think that that's that's happened twice now. Yep. With Mulcahy, who just a couple of inches over the line. Yep. It was a two. A three. And this one as well. I understand why Steve wanted him to take a look, but it was a good call. Good help by Yubo on a roll in Jalen Smith, very cognizant of his presence right now. Uh oh, look at that. He induced the foul, played a little Reggie Miller with it, got the reach, and then decided on that reach to use it and get the foul. Three shots coming. Montez Mathis, I'm trying to figure out why are you reaching? And that's an excellent play by Anthony Cowan Jr. But Mathis, the last time Cowan possessed it, got called for a reach in. And if it wasn't for the hook and hold, that would have yeah. been the third reach Absolutely. foul for Mathis. Got to play defense with your feet, not with your hands. Move your feet. Don't allow him to turn the corner. You're not going to take the ball away for the most part. Fifth in the Big Ten in scoring. Fifth in the Big Ten. He's an excellent rebounding guard. I mean, he... He's just under four rebounds a game, 4.3 assists, to go along with 77% shooting at the free throw line. And you know, those are those are giveaway points right now. Mathis is as a sophomore has got to be aware of the impact. Well, that decision that he made, Anthony Cowan has provided a little cushion and much needed cushion for the home team. Allen with 16, 11 this half. Yaboa nice. giving it up, dropping the dime to the big man, and Miles Johnson slams it home. It's 52-51. Excellent judgment. Rutgers recognize they don't necessarily need a three, and your defense is solid enough to make a stop. The last 11 points belonging to them. How about that? Moving screen on Jalen Smith. Yep. But first here, draw the defense, get Smith off his feet. Boy, Jalen is still lobbying over that moving pick. Crucial. An extra possession now for Rutgers. Boa pulls the trigger again, and the rebound to Ayala. Cowan has the last 11 points, Lynn, for Maryland. As it should be. Senior leader. Notice the ball's in his hands. Shot clock under 10. You got to create. There he is. Well defended again by Rutgers. That was some roadblock Caleb McConnell offered. Here he is on the other end. In traffic. Smith, another rejection, and a foul. Wow. Well, that's one of those, Lynn, where you just are better off pulling up. Yeah, we talked about Jalen Smith not being involved in the offense. But now, at this stage of the game, it's his defense that is so important. And a terrific job of holding his spot, going straight up in the air and making the block. That'll be the easiest of his six block shots and that is a career high in a single game for Jalen Smith sometimes that in between game and Marcel by the way is coming up Gimpy that would be a huge loss for Maryland and by the way you see those kinds of injuries as he's hobbling off looks like they're checking out it might be a Charlie horse or cramp of some kind. Yeah, they got it seems the, to be okay. They got the massage stick out there. We got some really good news over the weekend on Quincy McKnight, the Seton Hall star, who got hurt late in that game. It looked really bad, but after the MRI, it came out negative, so he is day-to-day -day 
And I say that because Seton Hall's got some big games, including tomorrow night, to go along with Sunday in that matchup against Villanova. But sometimes these injuries, particularly to the limbs, are worse than you might think, or not as bad as you might think. Turpin's leading it by one with 53.8. And uh, a date with Illinois. Talk about incredible runs. If, if Rutgers isn't the surprise story, certainly Illinois is. Well, you take a look at this conference. You take a look at Maryland's schedule. Illinois, certainly something to need, a team that needs to be surmounted by Maryland. But with that schedule right there, Maryland goes three and two. Or, you know, they can win a couple of those road games, split with Michigan State, whatever. You know, they can create some distance. they got to win this one first. Hard to believe as you look at the upcoming schedule for Rutgers. The same thing. Yeah, it really is true. Mirror images of one another. Well, we got Michigan playing Ohio State tonight. Neither team ranked. Both teams rivals, and both teams at one time this year were in the top five yeah, in right. college basketball and riding a, a high that most thought would take them all the way to March. Now, they got a lot of work to do to satisfy the bracketologists out there. The roller coaster of a season. One and one for Morsell. And they worked out that Charlie horse that he had. I think he wanted to get uh, well during that timeout, don't you? <laughs> I think Mark Turgeon wanted to get well. I got freebies coming the other way. It's amazing when they get the ball in their hands. How much better those uh, chiefs in the armor can be. Only one of two. Two-point game rather than three. So a lot of options here for Rutgers. Well, look for them to go to Har Ron Harper Jr. first. They got Mathis with the ball right now. Swing the ball, reverse the side. Oh, Look at that. Poor decision by McConnell. Little miscommunication there on a cut. 6.9 second differential on the shot clock. Do you play straight up here or no? With the defense that Rutgers has, if I'm Steve Pico, this is learning. It's a teaching point also, then maybe you do. But you don't give up a layup. Well, they do decide to extend the game. Yaboa will pick up the foul on Morsell. Once the ball got into the front court, Heichel decided to extend the game. And Morsell will get back to the free throw line. That's a double bonus, too. So two coming, that being the 10th team foul committed. Well, Morsell at 76%. I guess that's what they were waiting for. He's, he and Smith are the lowest free throw shooters on the floor. Actually, Williams is 76 as well. So outstanding free throw shooters on the floor for Maryland. And the timeout taken by Rutgers. They want him to think about it before the next one coming up. And a reminder, Xavier and DePaul coming up next here on FS1. Uh, the pressure is always on the home team, Glenn, in these situations. You just don't want to give up your home court. They're 12-0 in league play here at the Xfinity Center. Yeah, I mean, once uh, Rutgers started to extend the game with the foul, now you start to play the idea that you take the best available shot. You don't necessarily need a three if you're going to push the ball up the floor. If you can get it quick enough and even score quick, too, Turn around and foul. Now it's time to extend. If you're going to extend the game, extend the game. Well, particularly if he makes this bucket, it becomes a right. two-possession game. Hustle down. You know they're going to give you the layup, right? And then well, they'd be foul loathe, again. They'd be loath the foul. There's right. no question about it. Last time Marcel was at the free throw, free throw line, out of a timeout, he made the first, missed the second. Well, if he misses this one, Maryland still has to guard the three line. And anything inside, you're willing to take. By the, way, Rutgers. And by the way, Rutgers is over the last nine from downtown. Got them both. So a two possession game. Got to push it and go hard. Don't settle for a three. Oh, he did. Off the front iron. That's, wow, mistake. that's surprising. That's a mistake. Got a foul. 
Allen playing keep away and it's foul. Yeah, I'm surprised too. Thickly coming out of the out of a timeout. No one feels worse than Caleb McConnell, and he was one of the guys that in the past has been very effective from beyond the arc. But I'm with you, Lynn. After the quick foul was given up and they decided to extend the game, I thought they would run down, get the quick layup, and, and press again. I mean, he, was, he clearly had plenty of space, got the high pick. Yeah, I mean, that's the that time. That was the decision. That's the time when you got to force the issue. You got to get to the paint. With the miss, a five point game. So, still time. Yaboa for three. Pulled down by Jalen Smith on a career block shot night for him. Smith was incredible, as was Cowan. And Maryland wins it. 56 to 51. And they move to 8 and 3 in the Big Ten, 18 and 4 overall. Enjoyed it, partner. Uh, it's actually, people think it was an ugly game, but yeah. if you look at the beauty of the defense being played and the plays made down the stretch, that's fun. Third time this year, Maryland wins without scoring 60. Coming up on FS1, more college hoops. Xavier taking on DePaul for Lynn Elmore, Tim Brando. So long from College Park. Here is Rob Stone in Los Angeles. Well, Jalen, a lot of people say that wasn't a pretty one, but uh, you'll take it, right? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, every, we know every game in the NCAA is going to be a tough one. Uh, they gave us their best shot, and uh, we just continue to play our game. Well, you had 14 points, 15 rebounds, 6 blocks. You've been on a tear lately. You know, what? what what's the reason for it, and wh where is it coming from? Uh, pretty, just, pretty much just my confidence is high, and um, just me being more aggressive and more assertive and making sure that I'm doing whatever I need to do to help my team win. Well, you guys now have eight wins in the Big Ten, a uh, share of first place. How does it feel and looking forward? You've got teams like Illinois, Michigan State, others. You can create some distance. Uh, yeah, uh, it's, it's, we know that every game in the Big Ten is crucial now. Uh, the rankings are up and down right now, and um, just being in first place or top of first place, it's, it's amazing for our team. Well, good luck going the rest of the way, and uh, go Terps. <laughs> yes, sir.